The leopard, one of the largest and most fearsome cats on the planet. For centuries, they have traversed the regions in and around Africa and the Middle East, leading to their unique spotted design becoming synonymous with various cultures, garments, and fashions. However, this has expanded to a few unique camouflage patterns as well. Now, on this channel, we have taken a rather extensive look at leopard print and its use among warriors around the world and did touch on the camouflage patterns inspired by it. If you haven't yet watched that, the link will be in the description as well as at the end. But back to this video, though. We'll be taking a look at four different patterns that come from Europe and Africa and talk a bit about some of the garments associated with them. So first up is a pattern that came out of Poland around the late 1970s and early 80s. This design is often called leopard, but has also been referred to as cheetah. The design, though, is actually neither, but rather something of a mix, as leopards have open rosettes with darker colors inside them, while cheetahs have just spots. So here is an example of a jacket. Now this specific one is technically a commercial piece, which can be determined through a few indicators. But before that, let's quickly talk about what makes this pattern a bit unique and a tad confusing. Throughout the Cold War, Poland made a point to try and constantly update and redesign their uniforms. This in part resulted in larger overhauls around the start of every decade or so, and often saw the creation of a new camouflage. The 60s had their rain pattern, the 70s the Mora, which leads us to the 80s, which nearly saw a few unique designs, one of which was this leopard. However, unlike its predecessors, no new pattern appeared around the early 1980s, and though the exact reason is somewhat shrouded, many blame a major event that had been brewing in the country since the late 70s. Around 1980, the Solidarity Movement began as a response to the country facing a deepening economic crisis, rising food prices, and people's growing distrust of the government. This eventually led to the creation of the country's first recognized independent trade union, but also martial law the following year, which lasted until 1983. These events would essentially be the beginning of the end for the Polish People's Republic, which would dissolve come 1989, but that itself is a completely different story. Though not a definitive reason, the timelines do match up as the government, and by extension military, were heavily focused on the events relating to solidarity. Both the movement and the union, they shared the same name. Come 1981, the leopard pattern began being seen on numerous garments created for hunting, recreational, and general outdoor use, essentially putting the final nail in the coffin for the pattern as this essentially caused the design to become deregulated to an extent. Now, these are two related elements that are often referenced alongside the pattern. There were likely other ones at play, however, by the mid-80s, the Ministry of Defense had moved on. So, what's the easiest way to tell the difference between an armed forces piece and a commercial one? Well, it's actually rather simple. Look inside for a tag like this. Oftentimes, a tag similar to this one will denote it as a fashion or commercial piece. This particular one roughly translates to SP work of Warsaw Taylor's fashion model production. Other ways to potentially identify test pieces are to look for a dedicated liner, in the case of the top, that is often tan in color, small black numeric stamps, squared pleated button pockets, additional sections, presumably to attach gear, and an overall longer appearance. Though it is worth noting that some commercial sets were made that somewhat mimic test pieces, they also usually include the same giveaways such as tags and lack of aligning. Regardless of the supposed story surrounding the pattern and original intended usage of uniforms, nowadays any piece with the camouflage is seen as a collector's item and have become a bit hard to find. When they come up for sale, they often fetch upwards of 150 to 200 US dollars, if not more. This particular garment, for example, cost around 250. One thing that is interesting about this pattern overall, however, is its similarities to the leopard pattern seen in the Central African Republic around the same era. Though the designs were different, the colors and how they were oriented are very similar. And speaking of Africa, we're going to be moving down there to look at two camouflages that, though used by two different units within two separate countries, appear almost identical and are frequently seen on similar uniform cuts, which can get a bit confusing at times for a number of reasons. Those two designs are the leopard patterns of Uganda and Ghana. The Ugandan variant, distinguished by its redder brown and brighter green colors, was a pattern that appeared to be worn by certain specialty units of its land forces, as the camouflage was first seen in use around the end of the 2000s by soldiers who took part in joint U.S. Army trainings, many seen accompanying VIPs such as former general and president of Uganda since 1986, Yoweri Museveni, and later on members of the Special Forces Command. The Ghanan variant, on the other hand, denoted by a more muted brown along with slightly blacker rosette shapes, was one adopted by the Immigration Service, which remains in use as of 2022. 
The official reason why these hues are slightly different is a bit hard to say, while the reason why they were adopted in the first place is even harder to determine. When trying to get in contact with both groups, the emails sent either failed to deliver or were never responded to. It's a safe bet though that it has to do with the countries being somewhat close geographically with the Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly Zaire, which was the progenitor of the leopard camouflage idea, as Uganda is up against its eastern border, whereas Ghana, though a little further away, is still relatively close in the West. However, as far as production goes, the reason they're almost identical and frequently appear on the same or very similar uniform cuts is because both variants of the pattern appear to originate from the same Chinese company, which at the time of purchasing was being sold by Bangbu Roy Fang Clothes Making Company Limited. So either they or a related factory simply adjusted the color slightly for use by both countries. It appears that the two variants are created in three primary cuts, all of which were based on previous US military designs. The Vietnam era jungle fatigues, the battle dress uniform, BDU for short, and the first generation US Army combat uniform, or ACU. Oh, and a combat style shirt that also pops up from time to time too. Now, photos of forces and officials wearing these patterns seem to show that all three versions appear to varying extents and are often mixed together for whatever reason. The Ghanan set here is in the Vietnam era cut and appears to have had its official government tags removed as the signs of the stitching are still present. The Ugandan though is very much based on the BDU cut and appears to have only the size tags and really nothing else. Being that these were sourced directly from Bangbu Royfeng, it's possible some were leftover stock that had government tags removed, while others were sets made in excess or something somewhere in the middle. Now these pieces are a bit hard to source, however they do not go for much as they cost around $100. Last up is the leopard pattern of the Forces Army Zaire Waz, FAZ for short, or in English, Zaire and Armed Forces. This design was originally worn by certain paratroopers and then the Kaminola division considered to be the personal guard and unit under direct control of the country's leader, Joseph Mobutu. All of this was talked about in our leopard video, but long story short, Mobutu often compared himself to that of a leopard and very much encircled his identity with symbols of it. This extended to his personal division by equipping most of them with this unique design. Slowly the pattern would be more and more deregulated making its way into the hands of other units of the FAZ along with rebel forces. But this design did help bring the idea of using leopard print as a camouflage pattern for military applications and eventually spread to many countries in Africa and parts beyond. This particular shirt includes a size small tag inside as well as a single identifying name tape that states FAZ86. The FAZ abbreviation is very straightforward, however the 86 afterwards is a bit of a mystery. It may have to do with a year, though info about it is scarce. Plus other garments in the pattern sometimes just show FAZ, while other camouflages worn by Zaire and forces show other numbers such as 85. The pattern was used from the mid-70s or so up through the 1990s, but likely can still be seen from time to time within the country. Though both Joseph Mobutu and Zaire ceased to be in 1997, the country, now called the Democratic Republic of the Congo, still issues a specialty camouflage pattern for its presidential guard, though the design is far more different from the leopard pattern. Apart from influencing other armed forces and government agencies, the design has made quite a splash in the fashion world, being seen on shoes from Converse, shirts, pants, and shorts from Invincible, Levi, Sanctuary, and Supreme, as well as various other offshoots made by others using fabrics and designs inspired by the original Zaire version. It's a case of nature influencing fashion, which influences the military, which in turn influences fashion. So that being said, you can get your hands on the pattern with a little searching. However, to get a hold of an original Zaire issued garment is a very tricky task as they have become very scarce and are often on collectors holy grail lists which in turn has caused their value to skyrocket quite a bit. This particular shirt alone cost over $500 when it was purchased a few years ago. Before we wrap things up here's a quick side by side of all four patterns starting with Zaire. As you can see the odd one out is obviously Poland's However, the three African patterns share a lot in common shape and, to an extent, color-wise. If you do look closely though, you can see that there are some subtle differences between the borders of the shapes and the scaling ever so slightly, but they mostly share the same overall design. But with that, we've come to the end of this video. Hopefully taking a closer look at these four versions of the leopard pattern has been enjoyable and informative. There are plenty more designs to look at, and we'll be sure to cover them down the line once an item is tracked down. Until then though, if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. 
If not, no worries. Just be sure to check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.